guys, welcome to Trail Talk. My goodness, I'm so excited that you're all here with us today. We're in our, um, we, we're gonna name this our South Side Studio. I've been calling it the Classroom Studio, but we're gonna call it the South Side Studio. And uh, here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma, this is my dear friend, Haley Spradlin. I am so glad that Haley could join us today. We're, you guys, she's, She's a bundle of energy and she's got so many <laughs> cool things to show us. I don't want to um, drag on, but I do have one announcement that I want to be sure you all uh, hear about. I mentioned this last week on the 100th episode, but um, we have a special knife giveaway. We're gonna, uh, it, we're calling it our Father's Day knife giveaway. That's kind of a weird, um, kind of, I don't know, man kind of, knife giveaway yeah. thing yeah good good uh, yeah um so anyway <clears throat> it's a beautifully hand crafted mm -hmm. knife so it's not really like when you strap on for a weapon necessarily although it does have a forged steel um, blade on it it was created by skip rowell who is our featured artist right now and if you come into the heritage center for a visit and you say, I want to see Skip Rowell's exhibit, um, you will be automatically registered for the knife and the drawing will happen here on Trail Talk on Wednesday, June 16th, right before Father's Day. So, um, you know, come by here before you go buy a gift for dad, because you might win that knife. Yeah, I mean, that only makes sense. Yeah. And it, it's a little big, like for fingernail cleaning and kind of that kind of stuff. But you know, it could have multiple purposes. I don't. I don't know. I would. <laughs> I'm. Gonna, I'm gonna stop because I'm just getting a little carried away. Anyway, Haley, welcome to Trail Talk. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is so fun. Good to be back in Duncan. I love Duncan. I love visiting. Love seeing all the things here at the museum. So many. I was telling you so many cool things. That I remember from childhood and then uh -huh. so many more have been added yeah I love this. yeah we you know you kind of try to keep up with changes and trends and new ideas new technology mm -hmm. but some of our things some of the uh, our showcase items I guess I mean why change some if it's not broke don't fix it right beans again uh, yeah my beans again oh, <laughs> that's right there that proves to you this girl has been here I'm a Duncan, I'm a Duncan girl <laughs> that's right <laughs> Um, so Haley, I know you're going to do some demos for us and kind of take us through a little art lesson. We, you brought several pieces for us to look at, but we have these um, images here on uh, this big screen. So I think this um, has is uh, like part of the business that you do. So why don't yes. you kind of talk to us about this? Yes, I'm a graphic designer as well as an artist. And so, yeah, this first part is all of the graphic design side of things, which is what I have been doing in my business um, up until recently doing more murals, but my kind of um, specialty as far as design goes is branding. So logos and kind of everything that goes with them. So this is one brand that I did for Equity Brewing Company that's in Norman, uh -huh. and they have such a good mission, such good people, look them up, they're great. Um, but we did a branding system for them whereas this is their primary logo, but we built it all out, kind of broke up. Uh, this is a six pointed star representing um, kind of a symbol of beer whenever beer was first initiated. And it's oh. two best friends that came together and made this brewery. And so we have two six pointed stars as their logo. Oh, that's cool. And then equity brewing is kind of a hidden E and a B inside oh, of there. Oh, okay. And then yeah. we just broke that up into lots of different shapes. And so they can kind of use it on all sorts of things like social media and ads and marketing pieces. So, okay. So yeah. let me ask you, um, I guess this is kind of a, a strategy kind of thing. And so for, to brand something, you, you come up with a central, a theme, which mm -hmm. in this case would be these shapes. And then the way to pull everything together is you repeat somewhere throughout yeah. your marketing so that people see that shape and it just kind of registers in their mind. Brand yeah. recognition. Brand yeah. I, I am a marketing major from like, 
I won't tell you how long ago, but <laughs> it kind of came back to me for just a minute. That's it. I just realized, okay, And awesome. a lot of times I'll get pulled into projects where they already have a brand, already have a logo. And that's what I kind of do to expand things out. I'll take a look at their logo and think, okay, we've got some shapes here that could definitely be flags. We've got this little stick here that we could kind of minimize into its own little six pointed star and use in just mm -hmm. different little ways. Here's a little piece of a star that had their um, percentages that they have on each of their cans. So lots of different ways to kind and of And I'm seeing apart. that same little shape here on the outside of this, the circle thing. Yes, lifting with, you up was kind of their slogan because they kind of like bubble up with like fear and lifting you up and their equity is kind of their big yeah mission so I kind of take what their whatever makes them tick a certain company tick and uh -huh. kind of expand it into something visual so I right. guess like so an initial meeting with someone you would just ask them a ton of questions Tons is of that questions. is that right and and yeah. then you kind of start formulating after you get all of their information and create that from, from them. That is really the most important part of the process is me meeting with them. Usually we meet for about an hour and a half to two hours. And all I do is just ask questions and have them talk. And just that helps me. Some of the questions are even kind of similar, but I want to hear what they have to say and like all different sorts of angles and looks from it and mm -hmm. where I can get something that's customized to them that like is very much what makes them tick. This is for instance, a, a female owned brewery and that symbology of the six pointed star had to do with the very first Brewsters, which were female brewers. And so that kind of oh. all tied into something that's a brewery, but also super specific to these ladies and what they're doing yeah. and Norman. So I, that's my favorite thing is to find some clever little ism that they're already doing mm -hmm. and just kind of bring it out in the visual part. Oh, wow. My favorite. Well, I, I mean, now that you've broken this down and explained all this, I mean, it's very, it's obvious and, you know, you can see where the theme carries through and I'm guessing these are like your colors as well. You know, you select a few colors to, I know we've done that here at the Heritage Center. We kind of revamped and changed our color and our logo and everything. So and important. So, yeah. Yeah. They were wanting to really branch out and do some things that beer had never really done before because it's really masculine and kind of woodsy and they're like we don't want to do anything so we did really bright colors and a lot of fun symbolism there and it, it all just kind of comes mm -hmm. out from that first meeting of just kind of talking and just hearing what makes them tick right yeah okay also so like the ultimate like parent kind of situation <laughs> you could just like to grill somebody and get all of their feedback <laughs> anything and everything comes out of the time. Exactly. it's our best conversations and we get to know each other really well right off the bat and yeah. so it makes for a really great time the whole rest of uh, the logo okay. design process so that, yeah that's awesome that. well let's yeah you brought another one yeah <clears throat> this is also a, an all-female female law firm so we did a lot of lady justice stuff in right. their branding um, but Mug Winston were the two ladies that uh, were coming together. So we took their initials, M okay. and W, and kind of made, we made a little alternative lockup that has the little law scales in there. But for the most part, their logo was really great, just in that simplistic form to where uh -huh. it's an ambigram, which if you're a nerd like me, and I love ambigrams because you can flip them upside down and the exact same symbol. Mm -hmm. So anytime that works out in a logo, it always, uh, I always have a yeah. soft spot for that. So, <laughs> yeah, this, right. really well. this makes me think of, I mean, of course it's the same thing, but you know how people create brands for their cattle. I always end up with something about the cattle drives, but you know, people, I mean, they yeah. think of things like that very same thing, a, a creative way to use an initial or something to um, make their unique mark on their cattle and so that's that's what this that is so cool that I is, love that and this is stuff. very yeah. I guess it's just this the one color and this one I have it mopped up here just with all of their marks and this okay. one I had it just one uh two colors I guess just to kind of show mm -hmm. kind of all the different forms a logo can take but they actually had an expanded color palette it's on my website of all like the kind okay. of study of their what all we made for them, but, right. uh, but these are their primary colors. So the ones okay. that stop them up. Well, this is, I mean, these, these are very impressive. Let's look at this next one. I think this is a cool, oh, this was fun. 
this is actually for TEDx Oklahoma City TED Talks. Okay. But the right. Oklahoma City branch. Yes, I, I noticed, I went on your website and noticed that you had done some things for that. So I, I thought that's what this was probably for. Yeah, this is <clears> fun. <throat> X is kind of the big difference between obviously TED and TEDx. Um, but so we emphasize that a bunch um, for this local Oklahoma City's TED mm -hmm. Talks. And um, actually, when I was looking at this today, it uses a lot of geometric shapes, which that's what we're going to look at today in our demo. Uh -huh. But this is using a program called Cinema 4D, and it's actually you build a 3D little room. And I have like cameras right here that's taking a picture of the X, and I kind of sculpt these like round circles and little figures and put fun little textures on them to make them look realistic. and. I have like lighting set up like on the right side of this mm -hmm. image to kind of create some of those shadows. So it's really has taught me a lot about real life lighting and cameras and focus and stuff like that just within this digital program. Okay, so this is like like a, a real room, not just a bird or is it a virtual room? It's on my computer, okay. but it kind of uses, if you're familiar with AutoCAD, like kind of the like I happen to know what that was because Kevin was Over, yeah. a, he was a, a draftsman yes. at first, like your dad. Yeah. Yeah. So kind of the same is. thing. And um, from Computer what I can tell, automated drawing. Cat. Yes. Yeah. And it kind of puts you it's on your screen, but it puts you in a three dimensional world to where, you know, the X and Y axis, mm -hmm. uh, they also add the Z axis to where you can really spin all the way around, but it's still on your computer screen. And then you get to add lights that are, it's not a real room, but whenever you can zoom out, mm -hmm. it looks just like a little photo studio. With right. Like backdrops and things. Mm -hmm. You just kind of create on your computer. That is cool. See that weird math does come in handy in it life does. sometimes. I wish that I would teach Cinema 4D in high school because right? I think it would have made me like math more. Exactly. It really does make yeah. it more creative and fun. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, awesome. That, well, that is that is cool. I can only imagine how fun that must have been creating all of that. It's a blast. Um, so I think the next slides are um, these are this is your brand new project. I yes. guess this is so cool. I love this. This was a ball. Uh, yeah, just finished it up in November, and it is about. It's kind of hard to see from here. Well, here's some little bushes, mm -hmm. but a person stands about this tall. And it kind of gets taller the further it goes out there at its tallest point it's 13 feet and it's about a football field and a half long so you can't miss it if you go to Oklahoma City you'll definitely see it in classic right. curve and this was a blast it was just painting all day every day uh -huh. so it was a dream okay so I on your website you kind of have the steps are broken down uh let's let's see some more uh pictures of it yeah okay so angles. yeah so this I guess is this the taller part here or is it further still it's further still it was very hard to get a an image of it really you kind of can't see the whole thing in one picture but it goes from about three feet on its shortest side to 13 feet on its tallest side uh, so per, for perspective I think my head comes about right right there, there. okay so that's yeah. pretty tall yeah. so um tell tell the viewers kind of what this is and like your how you imagined all this and put this on this gigantic wall <laughs> yeah it was um with class and curve and they uh just wanted something if you guys have ever been to class and curve lots of shopping and just yoga and restaurants and people coming there just to have a good time mm -hmm. and there's this huge black wall that is really pretty i mean obviously all this crown molding the area around it is so lovely and they just wanted something bright pop of color to just kind of bring people in and it was so great while we were painting i mean people from yoga class would just like come and kind of like eat lunch in their <laughs> car or something and just like watch us paint and uh learned a lot yeah we like put up overhead projection at night to kind of trace each one of these little guys onto the wall and then yeah paint and so it. the wall was painted black already yes mm -hmm. it was uh primed black and then we came over it with uh paint many many coats to cover black oh, black, oh but, um, i bet yeah yeah 
but it was uh yeah um just kind of coming in well the kind of the theme of it was uh these are sort of abstract rose rocks they wanted something oh, rose rocks subtly okay. oklahoma themed mm -hmm. but nothing nothing super um in your face that um you know is real super symbolic just something that has some pops of color and maybe has some oklahoma ties and so we did these little rosettes um because of the rose rocks that are found all over oklahoma. and so like how how big was your team you didn't do this spot all by yourself i did not do it by myself there was one other artist one um, other artist okay yes <laughs> so there were two of you there are two of us, and then uh, there actually are a couple of my friends came out occasionally. Actually, probably about four or five of my friends would just come out and hang out, bring us food every now and then, and just grab a paintbrush and like paint and talk and stuff together. And so it really was. Uh, so had you designated social. like the colors you wanted in each of those? Yeah, we places. was like draw them up onto the wall and then come in just like dip our fingers in the paint that we were wanting it to do and kind of I have this designed on my computer but whenever we got there sometimes we could kind of feel it out and be like okay I think actually we need to probably have white we had uh pinks reds and oranges and yeah. lights mediums and darks in each of those and so we kind of just feel it out and put little paint dogs with our fingers to kind of separate it out um and then paint it after that and that way anybody could come up and it could Right, grab yeah. a brush and give a hand. My dream would be to have like a community art mural that's just like that. That's like paint by number where anybody could come up, any skill level, and just like paint a little petal or something like that. Cause that's about how Super easy it was for my friends idea. to come up. Oh man, I, that would be my dream. Any of you viewers with a connection, <laughs> get in touch with her. That would be so fun. I would love that. That makes me think of whenever Plato School had that one, wall painted and different kids who were going to school there would go out and paint you know a different part of that yes i remember i, I mean that was that. a long time ago no yes. i remember because one of my friend's little sisters drew a butterfly on there and every time i would pass by i'm like oh there's the butterfly yeah, so I, it's kind of fun to have some ownership and something like right. that right i think art should be just yes. accessible as possible to everybody right. so that'd oh, be a dream. that's cool okay let's go ahead now here's another picture of it and yeah. so the the flower i mean the rose rocks are a lot more spread apart on oh, this yes. part so was that kind of a part, part of your concept of right, it concept. yeah there is a part where yeah it kind of fizzles out and then there's like a kind of a central place where it sort of looks like it's exploding from so it's real oh, concentrated with flowers right. there and then kind of explodes out um and so it looks uh it, like i said very hard to get in a picture, but go for it for yourself. Go see it because because then it kind of all makes sense to where you kind of see, oh gosh, it's like a starburst of flowers. Uh -huh. So real fun to kind awesome. of walk by or drive mm -hmm. by. And these were my buddies that came out. I never asked them to come out one time. Aww. They just showed up with food and paint clothes, and we just had a, a ball. The best kind of friends. Yes, the mm -hmm. best kind of friends. Okay, oh, so that kind of shows a little bit. Yeah, of that's what I was just sort of. thinking too. So you primed with white we did this is that, that had black to primer yeah. but after a little while we realized that yeah we definitely need some white under there just to give us a little bit of grace on time because it was just taking so much probably coats. just so, uh, soaking in taking the color yes because this is a real um like porous concrete sort of so yeah that primer really helped us out after a while yeah. so yes okay uh let's see the next and there's oh. there she is in the finished product <laughs> okay go to the next one all right so this is a project you did here in town is that yes, right definitely this okay. is for my mom actually uh -huh. and this was a blast because she and i have such similar tastes right that first meeting that first conversation it was like yeah yes yes <laughs> yes let's do it like bright colors and big moves on you know just kind of real bold stuff mm -hmm. so it's everywhere and the ceilings were so tall that it's kind of immersive we it walk is. in it's oh real. it is it is amazing so this is at the emmanuel baptist church here in duncan in the education building mm -hmm. when you go in through from the alley and you go in there where the preschool area is um as this this is downstairs oh this is okay 
uh, this is like where the yeah the library. hallway yeah the old yes. library and you go around there to the uh, um, preschool area. So the the bright colors are painted, but this is some kind of a is it something you put on the walls? Yes, it's, this is different. Than yeah, normal. it's not it's not a painted mural. It's a right. different something different, which I thought would be cool for people to hear about. Yes, because that would be very very great talent if i could get just that sharp a line especially oh on gosh. concrete walls oh right. these walls are like kind of like stippling yeah oh they're, <laughs> they're so hard to paint it's kind of rough to rub yeah. against but this stuff works great because it's uh vinyl and so again i have all of these designs on my computer so it's easy to get those really sharp lines and I sent it to Walker Company in Oklahoma City. It does a lot of stuff for the Thunder, a lot of like window displays and car wraps and large scale stuff. And so they came down and basically put it up like wallpaper, like a giant sticker, actually, because it kind of like it's kind of wild to watch them put it up. Because if you're if you have a sticker that's as big as you know your bedroom wall, like, yeah. it's definitely going to get a wrinkle yeah. or like not and they're straight. pros they just oh, did it it was wow. mesmerizing to watch but wow. yeah so no paint on this one it was a lot easier install process that yeah. is that is cool let's look at the the rest of it look at this these designs yeah. and this is this is like a children's the children's area yeah where the kids are going to be coming in and going and so this is so bright so welcoming so fun i see some of the rose rocks Oh, well, I guess it's not. Yes. Is it? No, this came before the mural oh, in Oklahoma okay. City. And okay. I love these so much. It kind of reminds me of Starry Night right mm -hmm. there is yes. where it first came from inspiration-wise. And I was like, how can I make this vector, like computerized and uh, the medium that I use? And so, yeah, we put that up there. And actually, each of these little patterns is something different. And this hallway actually um, hit a few things for since I was doing it for my family. There's a few little patches in here that are just to like say hi to them. Like this one is for my dad because he loves roller coasters uh -huh. so much. But it's also very fitting with the theme of kids. Right. And I just wanted to make sure that any kid who comes in just feels like this is a fun place. Right. And I can hang out here. This is like for me, there's a couple of places downstairs where there's like a humongous handprint, like like four feet tall mm -hmm. and it says give me a high five so there's yeah. like some interactive qualities that kind of it can come up to I got really inspired by the color factory the museum of color uh -huh. um, because that's kind of what they do it's just fun because color kind of relates to everybody Everybody's exactly exactly I think there's one more uh the fun little face here yes and uh so glad with you yes yeah. yeah. with the cute uh, crazy hair and just all that that's just it's very fun it is a blast and so in addition to this kind of work the branding the murals the vinyl design you also hit the next one teach yes <laughs> yes i get to teach what i love i'm teaching at the school of design at uco and so these are all future designers all right and this was us mm, fall 2020 so okay. you can see like all of these little like, yeah i noticed it i thought did Haley like make a game <laughs> in her classroom or what <laughs> was that and then i thought no that's the the traffic direction yes. like when you were at homeland and you could only go mm -hmm. one direction on each aisle and all of that so it was so yeah. and there's like my little uh spit guard thing, oh. like that I sit behind with my little and then the TVs I mean honestly design was it was definitely had its difficulties with virtual teaching but it's kind of nice because job wise I mean we do so much on the computer that a lot of it was still a bit business as usual because they would submit their assignments to Dropbox and then we just use the TV to kind of critique each other's work mm -hmm. and um so yeah I was so proud of these kids because design school is very stressful but, yeah and to handle this on top of that they just did amazing so yeah it was a blast oh to, that's awesome and so yeah. are you going to be continuing that continuing to teach i hope so i uh, i'm an adjunct professor so we don't know until classes get closer to mm -hmm. time but every semester i'm i i would do it every semester i love it oh that's awesome. a blast inspiring the next generation yes okay um let's see uh Mia Marie 
Angelo says, yay, Haley. Oh, uh, that's one of the girls in the photo. In the she, class. Came, she came up to help me. One of your friends that came to help you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> when did you start your classes? Classes. Oh, at class and when did you start the class and project? Oh, that finished. Yeah, it, it finished in November. We started That's designing um, in September, began painting early October, and then finished hmm, like mid November. It was pretty fast and furious wow. for something that large. Um, but yeah. I just loved it so much that, mm -hmm. yeah, we just kind of knocked it out. That was also right in the middle of the big historic ice storm with, so i was oh, two of those yeah. weeks i was without power at my own house. <laughs> were you out painting though yes actually oh, okay. being out there painting was a bit more comfortable than being at my house because you know after a while the ice melted and never the weather was fine yeah um, so it wasn't bad to be at your house but uh or it wasn't and, bad to be outside mm -hmm. but at your house we were still without power yeah. so i enjoyed painting yeah. even more than it's, it's too quiet Yes, you know, that was it, a weird era yeah. of <laughs> so much going on. But yeah, so yeah. about about two months total. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's a that's a very big project, and that seems pretty timely. Mm -hmm. You know, start to completion to me. That seems like a pretty. So how did you? I was while well, you were talking about this. How would a person or a? I mean that that's a big project. How were you able to uh, get that? that project did, did were you approached was there a uh a, a way that you um oh what's it called um made a bid on uh, it you know or how did how did that yeah, work that is the a normal process for Jane making a bid I was actually approached by the other artists to see if I wanted to come on that we had known each other and so um that just worked out that yeah we just kind of teamed up pretty quickly and um yeah, that's, that's how, so a lot of it, I feel like with the community in Oklahoma City, um, which just got a huge recognition by USA Today as being like ranking number one in the country for public art. I was so wow. proud of Oklahoma City. Oh, like right. So cool. That is awesome. Yeah. Um, but they have a really great community of artists that uh, like Plaza Walls in Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. Definitely go and visit that if y'all haven't already. It's revolving murals all the time. And these guys that are in charge of Plaza Walls really make an effort to bring in all sorts of artists to come into where it really is a ton of variety, but also a strong community of people who will like talk to each other and let each other know when things are going on. But there are some bid programs too, where you can find them online and things mm -hmm. like that. So. Like the branding part, those jobs were those, like, were you recommended for those or did you? <gasps> yes, think, okay. actually I, um, I am not the most um, savvy with social media. And so um, really a hundred percent of my business so far has just come from word of mouth, um, which has been great with Oklahoma city being, um, honestly a pretty tight-knit community I just try to do the best work that I can mm -hmm. and hope that people tell their friends and so far that's really been what's worked so far how long have you been um in business for yourself it's been it'll be three years in August wow full time so, so so that it's pretty new venture then still I am learning all the time all the time design stuff of course but also just business things and how to kind of um yeah, do the day-to-day -day sharper and better. And I feel like I'm just kind of a sponge right now, especially yeah, in these first few years. So just, wow. yeah, it's been learning as I go, but also learning from really good people who have done it well for so long. That, and know. I'm just sitting here thinking, <laughs> you just kicked your business off and then welcome to the business world, Haley. We're going to shut down for a COVID. year. I mean, oh, wow. man. I, it was a bit scary. I bet it was. At the beginning, especially, um, I thought, well, how am I, I just don't know if design is going to be able to like, survive. If me as design is going to be able to survive something this big. And I just felt like a lot of people were, um, took it as like, a, like a lot of local businesses were thinking, okay, like this is our time. We can kind of like catch up on stuff that we have been maybe putting off for a bit or something, or maybe just like, kind of inspired by mm -hmm. all of the craziness around them to start new ventures and things. And it just kept coming up okay. And it was very scary at the beginning, but um, I feel like inspired me to probably work harder than I've ever worked before. Right. Um, both like 
physically and just mentally, you know, trying to, you know, keep calm as things are just kind of going wild around you. But um, ultimately, I think it, COVID, like the quarantine era kind of morphed me into a deeper person, I think. Right. I think it was really important part of my life. What a great, what a great perspective. And honestly, um, I mean, I have just been, I'm such a fan of technology and how, I mean, you could work for people, you could meet with people over Zoom or uh, Skype mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, and whatever platform and ask them all those questions, have a two hour meeting with someone and not have to mm -hmm. sit right next to them to do that. And just, you know, how that ended up, I mean, to me, it, in some respects, it ended up being a blessing more than it was a curse. I mean, that's where trail talk came from, you yes. know, it was, it's the same thing. And so um, I, I love it whenever I hear other stories about how the, the pandemic and the, the quarantine, the shutdown and everything just made everybody dig deep and think outside the box and say, you know what, we're not giving up. We're going to get out there and see what we can do. And so that's awesome. Exactly. I love that. So yes, much. that's cool to hear of you guys too. It yeah. really made everybody sort of pivot and yeah, thinking outside the box, which is always where the good stuff the comes good from. Good stuff. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's right. Well, let's let's talk about some of the things that some okay. of the like real things you brought here. The cake icing um yeah. thing here. This is so cute. You said this is something new that you're kind of uh in, I don't know, trying out or brand new. I just found this medium. It's um, by Golden, which is a paint company that I've always wanted to use their stuff. They make normal, you know, paints that you can uh, paint with without all this dimension. But when I saw this stuff is a gel medium or um, a, a heavy gel medium, either, either way, they've got a lot of different varieties on their website. And I thought, oh my goodness, that looks just like frosting. I was doing some other things with it, but as soon as I did that first swipe, I was like, I'd have to get a piping bag and see what this is like if I can get it to really stack up. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that's kind of new for me. I'm kind of venturing out into some different styles that I could do with this. So this is one of them and it's kind of heavy. It, yeah, it it's is. Good, it is heavy, but it's not, it's not um, like so hard that it would snap off if you accidentally hit like one of these little tit, you know, the little curly Q things on the end of the, when you yeah. pull the bag up. Almost kind of rubbery on yeah. those end parts. Uh -huh. So it make it seems it's more durable, I yeah. think is what I'm trying to say than what you might think. And so are the colors already mixed in? They're not. So I mixed acrylic, just normal acrylic paint in with this stuff and it comes in a, a big tub, almost like a tub of ice cream or something. And um, I take it out and put it, I have these little plastic tubs that I'll put the white in, it comes white, and then I'll put different colors in and then put it in literal mm -hmm. frosting bags with different tips. So I'm getting lots of, uh, my sister is a cake decorator. And Shout out to Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> and I've gotten a lot of tips, no pun intended, <laughs> from her on how to be better. So check back That's in and right. see where this goes because I'm so excited it's just fun to experiment with new things obviously I love kind of variety and mm -hmm. just learning things all the time and so this one is really kind of bringing the 3d elements into painting which is so fun right so um so would you consider this like a piece of art that you would eventually try to sell or would you incorporate this some other way into your business like like how you know how do you see this in the future yeah. no that's a great question because yeah so far my main experience in business wise is with through design and at art I've always done for fun ever since I was really small actually mm -hmm. at Cedar Co art school Jennifer style is where I took so many art lessons here in Duncan and she was amazing and I've just always kind of done it on the side for fun but um I'm kind of finding more opportunities where I might um go into something like selling the art uh in different places locally or um online mm -hmm. and so I've been thinking about doing combining kind of I've gotten into sort of some realism um, and I think it would be fun to combine these two, maybe do some portraits with some like 3D elements around the face to ah. kind of bring in sort of some 
realism with this fun abstract. I just love the way colors kind of flow together and think so they're kind of abstract really accessible for anybody to do but I just think it's fun to kind of watch colors go together mm -hmm. so I think and, it'd be fun to and so this. these all these canvases that you brought are just mm -hmm. you know varieties of color were they were they all done well they look like they've been done different ways like different techniques yeah so you want to kind of talk to us about some of your different techniques that you use sure and are these just fun things that you made or did you make these like um as like just experimenting i mean like what, um yeah. for the most part it's been just experimenting with the hopes of one day um going out going out I and know, selling them i just mm -hmm. love i've always loved going to art festivals just the really fun outdoor shows that everybody just kind of comes and you know grabs a corn dog and walks around and looks at cool art all day that um is really what i'm wanting to move into with some of these tour people can have them in their homes and um so uh, yeah very fun. they're let's see it looks like all of them except for uh these two are acrylics um with okay. silicone so i'm sure you guys have seen different things like acrylic pores um, but they, it's basically you take acrylic paint that you'd buy anywhere, mm -hmm. Hobby Lobby is totally mm -hmm. fine, and mix it with um, a couple of different things. Floetrol, if y'all are wanting to make it at home, Floetrol. Um, and where does, where do you buy Floetrol? Is just it, online. Uh, it's, okay. uh, it's actually used for, it has a different use, but basically it's this kind of um, thick, flowy medium that is a bit looks kind of like Elmer's glue, I would okay. think. Um, but you mix it with paint <clears throat> along with, this is a weird one, it's silicone, but it's also, it's treadmill, what, no, yeah, treadmill, it's a thing that you run on. Yeah. Treadmill belt lubricant is what silicone is Okay, the, that for. specific yes. type of silicone. And you put a couple of drops in that with your paint and your Floetrol and a little bit of water if it needs to be thinner, and then, you put them all together, pour it out, and it comes out in all of these really marbly textures that you kind of have no, almost no part in. Like it's really uh -huh. almost a show as it's happening. It's fabulous to watch. I definitely, oh, wow. definitely recommend you guys trying it because it comes out with all these just real natural marbly effects, kind of how water flows. It, that's what that flow trawl does is it makes the paint real thin to where it marbles out and doesn't actually mix together into one color, but it keeps all the colors so you, separate. Really? So yeah. all the colors are poured into one container and they don't mix. And they don't mix. Isn't that awesome? I mean, you could really stir it up and get it to mix, but if you don't, this is exactly what it looks like wow. when it's poured out. Oh my gosh, that is so cool. Isn't that neat? And then yes. a couple like the this one, these two and that one have more like dots on them. And uh -huh. so I'll take like um literally like you know just a stick and kind of uh just put dots on them if I didn't want it to be super marbly or you could just pour it all out and just watch what happens wow so it's really that is that fun. is I, I want to touch just so it's smooth it just comes on so you can feel the texture of the paint but it's not like a uh, like a, a brush would leave you know right. any kind of thing like that almost pretty, mesmerizingly so like it's yeah. very flat and um doesn't yeah have a it's just wow, wild that they that, don't mix together it's is, like very fun to watch and then these two are oils as well as uh that one and um i just oils. love the yeah oil paints is where um jennifer style again at cedar cope she would um teach us how to use all of these different media that we I know I would likely be probably too intimidated to try as an adult, but I mean, we were just all kids and didn't really know to be afraid of that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. so she just let us explore, which is kind of like led me to just love it as much as I do. And the dimensionality of oil kind of stands up in little peaks to where that oil paint kind of led me to this cool mm -hmm. dimensional acrylic that I've gotten into. So I like the 3D element of art. Yeah, I think it's I, fun. That's that's fun and it's unique. I think, you yeah. know, it's, it, um, in talking to other artists, um, you know, everybody kind of has their niche, mm -hmm. and yet everybody's always trying something new, which yeah. I think is cool. But you just take your personality into each of those different, uh, you know, styles or 
medias or whatever you're going to use. And I, you know, it's just so awesome to meet all the all different people and how they use paint and and just create all these things that are all so different. I just love yeah. it. I think a lot of it has to do with, and maybe it's just me, but I've heard this from a lot of different creatives is whatever you were kind of drawn to as a kid usually shows up a lot in your art, which is very, I mean, you, uh, you might remember all my lava lamps in my room. Yes, I do. So all of that goopy mess, I can totally see. Mm -hmm. I was, I loved it so much when I was younger that it kind of comes out in different things that I do, even in design, um, just like whatever shapes or colors or things that you liked as a kid, I feel like sometimes kind of oozes out in your adult right. art. Right. Well, I'm not going to say how old Haley is, but she and I have known each other for <laughs> a really long time, <laughs> a long time. And so, yeah, I, I watched Haley growing up and she was always, if she wasn't doing something artsy you were wearing something artsy oh you would oh, lots of colors and patterns and all sorts of things <laughs> like that I'm yeah joking. I mean but it, oh, I wish. mean it was just fun it was yeah. fun and that was you know that's what you make you make things that are fun that make people smile and you know not yeah. get too serious but just except for this this to right. me this portrait is just so very different this was a really interesting, this was actually during COVID. Uh -huh. um, honestly, this is kind of interesting how this came about. This was a little bit of a turning point for me. I had a bunch of work to do, which I felt so grateful for in the middle of the pandemic, but it was, it was a lot to kind of take in all at once mentally and emotionally. And um, so it felt like, oh my goodness, I have so much on my plate that I need to get done. And this one weekend, I, um, I kind of use the phrase like shirked all responsibility. Like I was like, I've got a lot to do, but I just want to see what would happen if I did this. And I didn't even plan on that really. I just uh, kind of started with something and then kind of kept on going. And by the end of the weekend, um, that's what it was. And kind of turned me into like looking at realism more. I did a lot more um, on my iPad with just different shading techniques and things and gotten into stuff that's yeah so different from mm -hmm. what I had done before but it's taught me so much I kind of feel like my brain's a lava lamp sometimes this past year <laughs> yeah and that it's just morphing and changing all the time and that was a really fun turning point that kind of surprised me too. so is this someone that you know is this a picture it's or not is yeah it just it's a photo reference um okay. but if you looked at the photo you wouldn't be able you to wouldn't like recognize it. That it was yeah. <laughs> so I say realism, but it's it's definitely I've got some work to do. But uh, yeah, I really let I uh, Jennifer style always told us like draw what you see, and which was so um, difficult at first because you want you know if a flower is a flower, you know you draw your little petals, yeah, 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 and you right. make up stuff in your head of like what a flower is supposed to look like or something. But when you really look at like, okay, I was really trying to look at like how her cheek was or how her nose was shaped or eyebrow or something like that. Eyes are always my favorite because I just feel like you can almost tell what people are thinking when you look in their uh -huh. eyes. And so um, just staring at a reference for that long and only drawing what you see, you kind of step back and realize even if you followed all those rules that like didn't necessarily make sense at the time, like a petal isn't a necessarily a perfect circle but there's a triangle in there somewhere and then you step back and it's like oh man that's what a petal really looks like it's wild how it happens if you kind of just concentrate on one thing at a time mm -hmm, sort of mm -hmm. is how I'm working at it so it's really uh helped me a lot wow I'm yeah. excited are you guys excited to see what she comes up with next oh my gosh well let's get into a little Okay. Art lesson. What do you yes, think? Definitely. I'm going to scoot this to the side a little bit. Yeah. Let you pull some things out here. Okay. And I've got some paper good. for you, too. Oh, yeah. Okay. So let's do it together. Okay. And you can tear off that. Um, I get to be the one want. who um, makes the. Usually, I, uh, when I do like little crafts and stuff, I get to practice because I make it at home first. And then whoever's on here with me has, uh -huh. to, has to try to do it for the first time. Oh, here's another the so, roles are reversed. Yeah, now the roles are reversed. <laughs> so, uh, Mary, Tina, you guys are going to get a big <laughs> chuckle here. Oh, and here, actually, in case these bleeds through, here's a oh. chuckle you can put under the Yeah, table. we want to keep this table for It's cute. <laughs> I like it. 
I mean, I could use an art table like this I know, in my it's house. Pretty, it is pretty awesome, I love it. it. So you can choose whatever color you want. I use, and if you're doing this with us at home, I have Prismacolor, but mm. I love magic markers. So use whatever you have. These have like a big end on this side. And a little end, end on, the on that side. side. Okay. So what I was thinking of doing, and I don't know if you want me to do this with my iPad to where they can see or not, but basically- well, yeah, you do, do, that, that, do that and, and do I'll that. do one on paper. Okay, yeah, fun. That well, way I just want everybody to know you can use whatever you have. I think art is oh, that, accessible to exactly. just literally I'm, everybody with whatever I mean, you got. Haley brought art paper, but if you have just paper, you can yes. use paper with lines on it. You can use whatever you want, whatever kind of marker you want. If you prefer crayons or something like that, you know. Love crayons. Yeah, right. Crayons yes. are fun. So fun. Yeah, notebook paper. I do that all the time. I actually keep little notebooks. Uh, golly, I think I went through about 18 notebooks during 2020. It was a lot to, a lot to <laughs> contemplate. Um, so right. yeah, use whatever kind of paper you have. I'm going to do, let's see. I'm gonna create a new screen here. And do I need to? Does she need to re mirror her face? Oh, golly. Okay, hold on. I gotta go back to my house now. Am I done? There we go. Oops. Oh, automatic. Okay. Oh, oh did it on October? Here we go. Oh, I see it's. Oh, just kind of thinking there. about it. Yeah. There we go. Okay. You're on. I'm on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and by the way, this, I'm using an iPad and this app is called Procreate. It looks, the little icon is just like that. Okay. This little icon yeah. right here. A little black square with a little uh -huh. rainbow through it. Um, and that's what I used to draw on all the time. But yeah, we're going to be basically doing the exact same thing okay. here. Okay. So I'm going to take just any old color. Um, mm -hmm. And basically what we're going to do is this is really how I think of everything from the simplest thing I do to logo designs to painting stuff um, is all in shapes. And so we're going to give you kind of like a toolkit to use um, that you all know what all these tools are. One's a circle. Okay. Um, one is a square. iPad has, you know what? I'm not going to do anything perfect. We're going to go back. Okay. I was iPad about has to say, things. that's cheating. That is cheating, exactly. <laughs> We're going to go all, yeah, all real here, okay. all authentic. So we've got a circle, a square, um, a triangle, uh -huh. um, a curve of some sort, okay, and then a line. Okay. And I guarantee that really, if you have this toolkit, you can draw almost anything. And um, like I was telling you, I think that really anything is possible, especially in, especially in art, I think, but anything's possible as long as you just keep going. That's kind of been my thing. That's how kind of like that turning point was for me. I really just kind of kept going until it looked like how I had in my head or how I was like thinking about it. So these shapes, circle, square, triangle, curve, and a line, ones we all know, but that's going to be um, what we use here. So I'll just put that up there. Okay. And then let's say, I'm gonna switch colors here. So we can use, let's see, this curve here and draw a little curve like that. And then we can take our triangle here, flip it on its side, and then maybe another triangle and another triangle, and another triangle, maybe a little circle, another curve, and then let's take oh, it down. Look at you. Yeah, curve, curve. Curve, curve, curve. And then we got a little fish. Line, line, line. These are uh -huh. all the tools that we use right up here, but you can make a fish. So that one is a little bit, you know, uh, it's, it's fun. That's it's good. Silly looking, but here <laughs> that's, we go. So we, that's a nice, simple place to start. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we can move that over here. Um, let's see. We could do, oh, this would be kind of fun. Um, let's do a circle and let's do another circle or two and then we can do a curve um actually i like it we do a curve here 
a curve here, here, uh -huh. and here. And I don't know if this is creeping anybody out yet, but I kind of like clowns. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who are going to have a clown fear, uh, turn away. Prepared. Turn away. You can kind of do a little curve there to give it some shadow. Yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Let's do kind of maybe. Oh, we won't make it too creepy okay. here. <laughs> no uh, penny wise. Right. Yeah, or anything exactly. like that, please. <laughs> Just kind of using all the things in this little toolbox over here circles. Uh huh. Ooh, he's looking a little creepy there. Circle. Um, there we go. Um, that helped. Let's see. What do we want to make his hair color? Maybe rainbow. Maybe we'll do circles oh, on this yeah, side. And then what are we going to go into? Like red. This yeah. reminds me of like Dennis Rodman's hair. <laughs> like when he had like, <laughs> yeah. I loved his hair in the 90s. I would always oh, love no. to. I wasn't a big basketball <laughs> fan, but I always wanted to see what his hair, his hair like. was. So yeah. Great. So anyways, yeah, just little, basically geometric shapes. And this is really um, what we teach kids, not necessarily this exactly, but uh -huh. um, in the first year of design school, uh, they have to make what's called a geometric portrait and it's a self-portrait. And they look at a picture of themselves and then they pick out like, okay, there's a triangle there, there's a circle there, there's like a half circle here. Like they literally use geometric shapes to build what is their face and that's really what I see in logo design that's what I see in really the most complex designs is like starting out with shapes that you know and then just kind of keep going and adding stuff like shading or you know things that are more complex right. but if you kind of start with what you know then it's kind of surprising what will kind of like keep happening um so what do you want to draw that's fun okay I guarantee you can draw almost anything with what we've got, the geometric shapes over there. So, <clears throat> hmm. for some reason, I always try to draw flowers. <laughs> you know how you doodle? Yes. I doodle. On the phone. Yeah, yes. I doodle. I doodle flowers um, a lot. But I think let's I'm do some going flowers. To I'll do flower with you. Yeah. I'm going to. I've got green though. I don't, I want a green flower. Color. Okay. I can just keep going on this clown guy because actually there really are geometric shapes just everywhere. I'll give him a little circle here and triangle. And a triangle. We've got a bow tie all of a sudden. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's, that's good. Little curve and another little curve. You know, really, your rose rocks were kind of circles and curves. Circles and curves. That's it. Yes, weren't they? Yeah, I. That's I love circles. I will say, you say you're drawn to flowers. I feel like almost. At every point, at some point in almost every design, I'll do something with some circles. I think that's just kind of what I gravitate towards. And it is, I mean, when you're talking about logo design and stuff, they, you know, um, it's all about like kind of what people see and they don't think they're seeing kind mm -hmm. of. And so certain curves of lines are just kind of like happier to look at and more peaceful to look at than say, you know, these sharp, curves, what do they say? Like, uh, there's a guy who actually does a TED talk on that, that um, he draws two different shapes and asks you, he gives you two different names and one's like, um, like Sophie and one's like jibber jabber or something. <laughs> and everybody always like names the circly curvy thing, you know, Sophie and then the uh -huh. zigzag. And so it's just kind of interesting what your brain kind of derives from different things and how it makes you feel and how a lot of it's like just kind of psychological and I think that that's kind of fun in marketing I'm sure you yeah okay I did not know that you're a marketing major well you know that's because I never went into the field no but <laughs> everything you do it centers around I mean it that does. totally it really makes does. sense yeah I mean that that's 
That is exactly right. Everything that people do. Let's see what um do we have any suggestions from Facebook Live of a yeah. something that anybody wants us to draw? Any requests? Do you have any from requests? the audience? <laughs> Let's see, circle square. I'm gonna think of just something random, like a flamingo. We'll just see if we can do it. Oh, that's a flamingo. That's a good. That's a challenge. That would be a great it practice is a challenge, challenge, wouldn't it? Yes. So you know that a circle. I don't know what the age group of like the uh, audience is. It can be anybody because they can go back later and watch. With, okay. Yeah. You know, anyone. So. Because you know a circle. Um, Dinosaur. Let's do it. A dinosaur is a great idea. I'm going to go ahead and so give me a clean slate here. I'm going to have a dinosaur. Man, there's so many different dinosaurs to choose from. Or a giraffe. Oh gosh. Oh man. Okay, I'll go with first. Well, first one's first. I'll do a giraffe or I'll do a, a dinosaur. dinosaur. And let's do a really weird color of dinosaur. I don't think I've ever seen a turquoise dinosaur. Oh, that's, yeah, that would be, that. that'd be a fun one to have on someone's wall. Oh, okay. Now here's where I would get lost digging through the colors. Oh man, there's something. <laughs> Actually, the other girl in the photo, Miranda, uh -huh. gave me all of these markers. One day she just came to my house and said that she was getting rid of them and oh, coming my. in handy here. So thank you, Miranda. All right. She's my girl. Okay, so we've got kind of a curve. This curve you can use in, you can stretch it out. You can put it together with another curve and kind of make an S curve like that. Um, so do whatever you have to do to see the shapes that you kind of want to see. Um, you can use right there. Let's draw ourselves a rectangle. Don't mind us, y'all. We're just creating here, right? <laughs> Let's do another curve, another curve, another curve. And I don't know, does dinosaurs have spots? I don't really think so, but we're gonna go ahead and add some. Well, you know, there can there can be polka dots. Yeah, I mean, this will kind of get the giraffe in there too. <laughs> I did a long neck dinosaur. It's, a, it's kind of a high one. Yeah, it's a, maybe this is what where giraffes come from. <laughs> oh, let's see. Okay, here's another curve. We'll do some toenails. I'm not actually sure if dinosaurs have toenails either, but I think I'm mixing an elephant here. We'll have a an art elephant dinosaur, yeah. whatever. There's another curve. Okay, I am eyes. making a dog house. Oh, houses. Yes, houses I, I love to draw too. All right, there's our Brontosaurus raft. <laughs> <Le Pent. laughs> And I hope that you'll see that this is a great you, art lesson, Haley. This you don't is, have to be like anything fancy to make stuff because none of these are fancy on mine. Because this is what, oh my goodness, look at that. <gasps> curve, 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 all those little I, shingles. Yes. You can go as detailed as you want. Curves, triangle, square, big curve, line. Here's a bunch of circles, curve lines. And all apart, they're just shapes, but all together. Mm -hmm. And I even anything. added the curve lines in another color to my flower for a little bit. dimension. Yes. So fun. Look how easy, guys. That took no time at all. I just love this simple little lesson, Haley. It is Gosh. really so fun. Do you want to see what I do? Whenever I keep it pushing? Yes. You want to? Yes, okay. let's see. So I was thinking. This is really how I do art all the time. You'll see in my like gallery here of all different things that I just kind of draw for fun. And it all starts out with just seeing those little shapes. So 
Uh, do, how are we doing on time? We're good. Go We're okay. good. Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to show you guys like uh, something that I have here uh, that I just, this is kind of how I work. I do this um, every morning just to keep my hand skills up. Uh -huh. And so I uh, have started doing, I started, I don't know, almost 36 days ago on the letter A and I've gone through the alphabet and then all through the numbers and I'm on number seven right now. I'm almost done, but I thought I'd do a letter here that uses this exact thing that we just did. Okay. Use shapes to make like real letters. The um, class that I was teaching at UCO is typography and it is so fun to look at letter forms, letters and numbers and just see the different kinds of characteristics there are in fonts and how you can speak, you know, in branding, you, a typography right. or a typeface can say something really happy or funny or serious or business-like or something, depending on what right. I'm, I'm thinking choose. of the attorneys. Yes. The, those letters are very business. That's, yeah. that's all no business. Uh -huh. yeah. And then, yeah, the equity, equity. thing, lots of bright colors because mm -hmm. we're just having fun. And so there's so many things that you can say with kind of not really any language at all before you even see the word, you can kind of see what the typeface holds. So I grabbed this one here. An R is one of my favorite letters because what you can do, you've got straight lines in there and then you've got curved lines in there. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to get to kind of see a little bit about what we just did in drawing something that maybe is a bit more complex than my creepy clown. Um, <laughs> so we're dinosaur we're giraffe. Dinosaur look. giraffe hybrid. <laughs> So the first thing I look at whenever I see a letter is I look at what its outside shape is. Uh -huh. So this here is almost, almost a perfect square. Right. Um, it might be a little bit elongated vertically. And then I start to look at all the different, I'm going to get a brighter color here. Um, then I start to look at all the different shapes that we just made that kind of make it up. So we've obviously got some rectangles here. Mm -hmm. We've got rectangles here. Oops. Rectangles, squares, of course. Mm -hmm. um, then you get a little weird and you turn your rectangle diagonally, but no biggie. That's right. just a little rotation thing. Then you've got some lines here. Line, 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 line. And then this is where it gets a little wild because curves are kind of, I, everybody always says, oh, I can draw a straight line if I tried, but I think curved lines are a little bit trickier because they just kind of ask swing any, out there. Ask any woman who does her eyebrows how no, hard a kidding. curved line is. Yes. They're hard. It is because, mm -hmm. yeah. You kind of need like a little, like a protractor kind of thing, <laughs> you know, if you're <laughs> yes, a lot of painters that I've been watching have Our compass, um, a compass. That's what I meant. Yes, they uh -huh. have a little thing to steady their hand to where they can make those curves. So it makes me feel better that curves are maybe a bit harder to other people too. But there's another curve, and we've basically got our thing. Uh -huh. So that's what how I start out. Um, is I look at a letter, and just for you guys' to say, I'm going to, this is how I, I normally do it, is I just have it on my phone, uh -huh. um, and so I can look at it constantly. So I'm just going to show you guys, this is what I'm working with here. Um, and then I look around at inspiration, just kind of things, whether it's around my room or um, in, I love having like these little picture books and stuff by my desk, and so, and also love, you know, just Pinterest and design inspiration, and so I picked out a couple that I feel like use some of the geometric shapes that we talked about uh -huh. in simplicity and complexity. And so if you gather inspiration from more than one source, then there's very little danger of plagiarism or anything. It's very much a thing where you're going to do something. Oh, wow. Own. I hadn't even thought about that, that, that you can't really create something and then look out there and someone else already has Right. That. Oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Wow. And for practicing and things, I always, I tell my students, I mean, to when you're practicing hand skills or something like that, copying the masters and looking at it to learn is great. Um, but plagiarism will get in, like, get in your way whenever you start to kind of expand behind, beyond just learning it. And so what I think is a good tool to use is just to look at a bunch of inspiration mm -hmm. instead of just narrowing it into one thing looking at, you know, kind of, I usually, this is how a lot of times I start my brands out is I kind of look and get like the general feel of what I want. 
And you guys can see here, this has lots of geometric shapes in it. it has lots of geometric shapes in it, but all together, they just look so fun. Right. So let's go ahead and get started. So that's where I'm at, but I'm just gonna look at this real quick and we can do, you, I normally use, so this um, app is so neat, tons and tons of different kinds of mm -hmm. brushes here. Mm -hmm. Studio pen, I go to almost always, especially at the beginning because everything's so straight and clean and nice. And I, you can of course trace over things for fun to learn, but I think that your brain learns better whenever you have to look at it and transfer it because tracing you know you can do that pretty easily and it's very like peaceful but mm -hmm. i think it's fun to kind of look at something and oops, go from there let's see so we've got a square and i'm going to go ahead and do my little magnetic thing just so we can make it look presentable <laughs> but, um, and just since we're digital so it looks about um, you know, almost like a perfect square. Maybe we right. make it a little bit taller. Like you said, the elongated vertically mm -hmm. a little bit when you were describing the R. Yeah. And then what I do is I take, um, I didn't say this earlier, but I also look at what that shape where um, I kind of divide it into little segments like, okay, I know that this is about halfway. This is about halfway. Um, and then I can kind of make little things like, okay, so this little serif, that big rectangle mm -hmm. starts about right there. That one ends right there. Actually, it's almost pretty close to thirds. I kind of get myself a grid going. Okay. Um, so here's about thirds. Actually, it's probably pretty close to about thirds all the way. Basically, I'm just going to draw some graph paper for myself. Right. And then I come in with the shapes that we talked about. So it doesn't really start to curve till about right there. So I'm gonna make one line this way. And this way. And so here is our, one of our rectangles. Then we're gonna we'll draw one another big one. Uh -huh. So this is so great how your eye breaks down the shapes in the letter, and then you recreate those shapes, and you know to uh, to be able to add the color, add the design. Yeah, you know, like the K was broken down in yeah. all those little puzzle parts almost that yeah. fit together to make the shape. It well, really is kind of like, I think that sometimes I think that art can kind of seem a bit, um, I don't know, intimidating or like you have to be good at something, something. But if you break it down into something that makes sense to you, then you kind of just roll with it and mm -hmm. see how that and really everything is possible if you just keep going and so you know what a curve is so add one right here it's like half a circle mm -hmm. and let's see this one kind of comes it's about right there actually so it kind of turns yeah and it comes about from halfway to about right there. And, you know, it's very difficult to get it perfect, but I, you know what I've been doing a lot of ever what? since, especially they put him on Netflix, Bob Ross, you guys are <laughs> into art and peaceful. You you should definitely watch Bob Ross. And he what makes is he feel called? Better. The Happy Mistake or something like Happy that? Happy Little Mistakes. Happy I Little Mistakes. I learned so much from watching him about how negative I can get in my head because he is never negative. Uh, Everything he does, even stuff that I'm like, oops, I bet, I bet he didn't mean to do that. He just, just goes with it and it's a part of his, he makes it a part of his thing. He is just, just the most chill dude wow. and kind of makes you a bit more chill too, mm -hmm. which is what I hope for everyone in art because yeah it there's enough stress there was a a man who did who does uh, there's a man named Jim Weaver who does leather art 
-hmm. And he's, you know, whenever he adds the dye, he said, it's completely unforgiving. There's nothing you can do. It's oh, there. Uh -huh. And so he had made this big Chisholm trail. Uh, it was several pieces. And um, anyway, there was one little bird and he said, that was where I accidentally put some ink. And so he had to make a little bird on it, you know, but I love that. Yeah. And it ends up sometimes mistakes really are like the best part. You're right. so glad for that. Kind of like we we're talking about with COVID. It's just a terrible experience, but how much we Look learned. That. So yeah, it's already kind of taking shape. And then I just kind of roll in here and sort of correct where you need to. And again, looking at your photo reference helps so much because you can kind of see all the little isms that make it what it is. Mm -hmm. um, and here in Procreate, you can kind of add colors uh, just by dragging and dropping. So that's what I'm going to do here just for time's sake. Awesome. But you can also just color, you know, just like you were when you were a kid. Right. And it's just so fun. So I come in here and kind of do all these little different things. And, um, yeah. And what a, what a, a great way to practice using your shapes. You have mm -hmm. an absolute goal. It wasn't like I'm going to use shapes and come up with my own idea. You had a goal. And so you were able Helps. to practice your shapes to create that. Yeah. I think that a goal helps me a lot. Not necessarily like as a like rule for anybody. If you just kind of like to go, I totally get that too. But for me, I think that a goal helps a bit. Mm -hmm. Me make like tighter things. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Or you can just go at it your, yourself, but letter well, forms are easy. I, to I just feel like we've learned so much today, Haley. Oh, God. I, mean, I love learning. This, so I, I mean, yeah, there are some, yeah. some very simple, practical ways to, you know, help kids feel comfortable trying to do art, you know, and just, Definitely. you know, just wow, some, some really fun stuff. I have kind of like your marker collection in me here, looking at these, these are so great. <laughs> but um, I, I love your creativity, Haley. I love that you um, just went for it and started your own business. I love the success. I mean, oh my gosh. And, and just that your work is visible for anybody driving down class in curve. I mean, so that is yeah. just the coolest thing. And uh, guys, she's from right here in Duncan. I mean, how proud are we of that? That is, that is so awesome. And, you know, she came here to the Heritage Center uh, as a kid and probably did some art here yes. at the Heritage Center. Yes, you know, all come and look at all the stuff they have. It's, it's yeah. so fun. You could be here for a long time yeah. and just look at all the little nooks and general store. I love the general, the general store. store. We I'll have, have we have pretend there. food and stuff in there now. So like you can act like you're buying stuff oh, and nice. yeah, we have like a little money drawer and everything. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Cool. Yeah, it's very fun. But anyway, Haley, um, it has just been such a joy to talk to you today. Thank you so much for being our guest on Trail me. Talk. And fun. there are, if any of our viewers would want to talk to you, find out more information, um, what are some ways that they can get in touch with you? And we will put all of this information in the comments on um, the awesome. Facebook yeah. feed. Okay. So um, like, yeah, my website is just my name, haleyspradlin.co. So not nix the m from the dot com uh -huh. co um and you can email me through there and also my social media i uh post um on instagram and tiktok if you guys were interested in these letter forms i have a tiktok that's hey sprad h-e-y-s-p-r-a-d and it has all the different letter forms and numbers i've done so oh, far fun. in speed art like i kind of time lapse it so y'all can see kind of the process shrunk down into about 30 seconds oh wow <laughs> that's cool that's very fun that's a cool thing too yeah so it's really it's a blast okay well we will put all that on the comments on okay. facebook and um you know i th i think if you guys have any questions i i know that a lot of people maybe are just Maybe they're aspiring artists. Maybe they're, you know, thinking, oh, I'd like a career change or, you know, anything like that. I guess the design school at UCO 
might be a really good place to learn if you could she could be your teacher come on I mean seriously it's a win-win right there <laughs> UCO so. is a blast if you guys are serious about graphic design that is the place to be in Oklahoma it's the best one in the state oh, that's great nationally so yeah oh. if y'all are serious about it reach out I'd love to help awesome thank you for I mean I'm so glad too that you're involved in that art community um in Oklahoma City you know oh national recognition oh you know man, that, so that you're a part of that group i just feel like that has all of that networking and everything is just going to boost your your career boost your future you know and really help you out there so anyway just don't forget about us down here never you know whenever you're famous maybe you come back <laughs> on trail talk and let's do <laughs> it yeah i will say remember come when back. she was here <laughs> we'll do a flashback to the dinosaur yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway thanks again Haley thank you now you know whenever we sign off we say happy trails so you ready yep okay happy, happy trails, trails.